California health advocates have declared this first week of August HPV Vaccine Awareness Week. HPV or human papillomavirus is a preventable infection that is closely linked to certain cancers, including cancers of the cervix, head and neck. More than 42 million people have HPV and every year another 14 million Americans or so pick up the virus. So getting vaccinated early enough to prevent infection is key. Joining us now to talk about the HPV vaccine is Dr. Eric Hogan, Scripps Clinic pediatrician and co-chair of the Scripps Vaccination Committee. Welcome, Dr. Hogan. Yeah, I, and thank you for having me this morning. I, I really appreciate it. Oh, absolutely. So how necessary would you say this vaccine is? Yeah, I, it is very necessary. So, you know, what we always tell patients is that uh, about, you know, virtually every adult in their lifetime will get exposed to human papillomavirus. Um, most people clear it. Um, about 15% of people will, will have a persistent infection with this virus. And that is the infection that is the cause of cervical cancer, head and neck cancers, especially in men, and other uh, genital cancers in both men and women. So it's very necessary. This, this, uh, this virus is ubiquitous. It likes to infect us. And by giving the vaccination, we can prevent cervical cancer and prevent many other cancers that are very difficult to treat once they occur. Dr. Hogan, are there any things uh, parents should be concerned about with regard to safety or side effects with this vaccine? Really not. This vaccine has been around since 2006 and many hundreds of millions of doses have been given and there are no appreciable side effects. The main benefit would be prevention of cancer. So what would you say is the optimal age for vaccination and why? Yeah, you know, yeah, but that's really interesting that the California Public Health, um, the vaccine's always been licensed down to age nine and the California Public Health has been having an initiative to begin to vaccinate a bit earlier than the standard that we've been doing in the community, like 11 to 13. This is partly based on a study from the Lancet last fall that showed that the younger you get the vaccine, the more immune response you get and there's a marked reduction in the future rates of cancers. I think in the, in the study from England, um, if you received the HPV vaccine at um, 12 to 13 years of age, there was about an 87% uh, reduction in cervical cancer when you're 20 to 30 years of age. If you received it older, there was still a prevention, but it was only about 35%. So definitely the younger you get the vaccine, the better the immunity and the increased protection against um, HPV related cancers and cervical cancer. You mentioned the risk of head and neck cancers in men. Now we Correct. have seen ads encouraging yeah. girls to be vaccinated, but what about the boys? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, both boys and girls, men and women are, are, in a, uh, are, are susceptible to HPV um, infection and HPV related cancers. And in fact, the number of head and neck cancers in men has been rising appreciably over the last 10 to 20 years. And as I mentioned, when I talk to my colleagues in radiation oncology who routinely treat cervical cancer and head and neck cancers, these are extremely difficult to treat and it's much, much better to prevent them first. Now, is there a certain degree of screening that needs to take place if you have a child who is a little bit older, maybe mid to late teens, because there might be a concern that they already have mm -hmm. it? No, the, the vaccine uh, is, uh, protects against nine different strains. Uh, you may have cleared a strain, as I mentioned, in previous exposure. You might get exposed again, or you may get exposed to a, a strain that you've never seen before. So we definitely encourage vaccination uh, nine through age 26 in both men and women. Now, in fact, the CDC approved the vaccine for 27 to 45 years of age with both men and women. But I think in, in that regard, uh, you should speak to your doctor and, and understand if it's appropriate for you based upon risk factors. So you do a shared decision making with your, with your primary care provider. Good to know. Dr. Eric Hogan, Scripps Clinic pediatrician and co-chair of the Scripps Vaccination Committee. Thank you so much. We really appreciate your time. You're very welcome and thank you for having me.